Does it make sense to somebody? Shout hallelujah. God bless you. It wasn't easy on uh, Friday. Am I right? It was tough. Abdul was uh, doing the, his job, MC job. Am I right? Let's do this. Let's clap our hands. Let's welcome the man of God. And the man was still in uh, Sierra Leone. Shout hallelujah. The reason is that uh, his uh, daughter, the first one, 17 years, was going to church or after church. After choir practice, on her way, lo and behold, a snake from nowhere. Uh, what? Viper. Viper. From the village, uh, excuse me, a certain village, a certain forest, you know, her feet. Yeah. Pa, say that I've already done my job. Your father will cry in uh, America. And the God of restoration told that serpent. Danala, you are joking. Everybody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. Why is the man was here after choir practice? Where from that uh, Oga? Oga snake. Shout hallelujah. And the man was here at the same time doing MC job. Can you do that? Somebody that have to be down. Say that prophet, you have to continue. I can't do it. The man called me, prophet, this is what I, I said. I am praying right now. Do not be afraid. Amen. Don't. Nothing will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Ba, 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 ba. Father, we don't want to hear this. Ba, ka, ba, ga, ga, ba, ga, ba, ga. Another call. Abdul, how are things now? Another one. How are things now? Robert, everything is fine right now. Uh, she's in the ambulance. Am I right? Going to uh, it's Friday. Friday, yeah, uh, Friday hospital. Something, something. Transfer her to another hospital. And they took the, uh, the teeth, the poison and everything. You know, they took them out. And now she is kicking, eating, jumping. <laughs> and At times, God can allow some certain things to happen and to prove to your enemies that indeed he is God. Am I talking to somebody? If I'm talking to someone, shout hallelujah. Shout amen. You know, God could have destroyed everything, but the Lord said, I will allow you. I will allow you to bite that girl and to prove to you that I am God. Shout hallelujah. And a viper we all know. Shout glory be to God. 10 to uh, 15 minutes. The whole thing has to reach here. And tear everything down. But the God that his father said. Said that you can't do the things for me. And Abdul to kill your daughter. It will never happen. And the man was still here doing mc job some of you come on come on things always stop you not to do things for god i don't feel like if the man the man didn't say anything am i right was still doing his job and the lord said that i would take care of the what of the rest leave it to me I am going to do it. And now, his daughter is okay. Amen. Doing good. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Abdul, God bless you. Thank you sir. God bless you. Go in peace. You will see them, okay? God bless you. I know you miss your wife. Yeah, very much. You are paying the price. Continue to pay. Everybody shout hallelujah. I think four, five years now. Get into six. No salutation. <laughs> you need extra oil. Everybody shout. Look at somebody and say, you need extra oil. <laughs> so you finish. Am I right? No more baby. 
Oh, one more. One more. She has done everything, tied the tubes, everything. No. The day you meet her, another baby will come. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory be to God. Look unto your neighbor and say, neighbor, we serve a living God. Church, that is the doing of the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Do you believe that your God will do something special in your life today? If you believe that, shout hallelujah. May you get ready for the festival of praise. And it is going to be on Saturday on. Are you sure? You are coming here with your white, white top or down. And your handkerchief, white one, big one. Shout amen. Nigerians will sing, Ghanaians will sing, Togo, Jamaica, you can name them. Where is Pastor Young? Be on your feet. The man uh, on Friday will be great. Everybody shout hallelujah. 365 days is not easy, church. The Lord has been faithful to us. The Lord has been what? Faithful to us. A friend of mine, we went to school together. Um, powerful guy, when we talk about money, 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 church, oh, money, one is one dollar in terms of money. You know what I'm talking about. The man is rich. Indeed, rich. We started from the scratch kindergarten, finished everything. Four guys, me, another soccer guy, or circle four, another one, two, dusted. Uh, you know, rich. A place in Ghana, uh, East Legon, which uh, for you to get a land, you have to talk about $250,000 to $300,000. A plot of land, 90 by 80. And now it's finished. You can't even get it. By the way, shout hallelujah. And this guy, when we talk about houses and the whole thing, and uh, his own house also is in that place, East Legon, in terms of money, church. When my man passed away, he came to the funeral all the way from where Accra to Kumasi. And it wasn't easy. He came. I have the pictures and everything. Kojo, how are you? I'm doing good. Ko, you know, Kobot, how are you? This and this. Long time. Hey, my friend. Oh, I will see you. Oh, thank you very much. You know. There was some kind of leakage about his own gas. And the wife told him that, can you please check it in the whole thing? Put some kind of lighter. My friend is no more. <laughs> Left uh, three children. Last, last month. Well, last. Went home for revival at the same time, funeral. Saw his mother. Because we grew up together. His mom knows me very well. Kojo, Kojo. Oh, Santi, don't worry. The Lord will. Tell the children. Houses, everything, you can name the money, but where is the man? A wonderful man, a good man, somebody who have good heart. <coughs> but look at you. A funeral that when you, if you want to donate something, let's take a thousand dollars. People will never hear your name. A thousand what? People will never what? They won't. They will announce it, you know, back home. Here comes lawyer Akano from Restoration Chapel International. A thousand. People will not hear you. They will not hear your name. People, because people were giving ten thousands of dollars, thirty thousand dollars. And thousand, how can somebody hear your name? <laughs> somebody say thousand? Even thousand, they won't hear you. What about $200? It means that you have to sit at the back. 
Until you're back, your name will never. They won't even see. We're not talking about 30000 and the whole thing. No, $35,000 in dollars, $5,000, dollars and you are here talking about $1,000. But with all the money, in, this is not somebody. I went there myself, saw so many people. We talked in the whole thing. We are like brothers. Not where. Because I can still see him. Shout hallelujah. But with three children. And the wife. I can tell you that it's by the grace of God. That is why you and I, we are still alive. Shout hallelujah. That is why we are what? Still alive. So we all have to come here and thank him and give him all the praise because he deserves it. So get ready on Friday. If you don't know how to sing, God is not interested about your voice. He is really interested about your spirit. Come, let us join together and praise his name. Because he deserves it. So are you coming on Friday? Prepare yourself. A journey to Jericho. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. Because Sunday morning, we are doing our normal service, a joint service. And night is the washing of feet. The 31st of December. You have to come Early, am I right? And to find somewhere to sit. I pray that God must come on the 31st night. Yeah, it is my prayer. He will get more souls. <laughs> we'll get more what? <laughs> Mrs. Akane is laughing. Yes, it's true. Lord, am I right? We'll get more people. Papa, please. I don't know the time you will, but indeed, Papa. If you can do it for me. <laughs> that will be the time the ghost, the people that you've seen about 20 years, they will come. And after the service, goodbye, pastor, we'll see you another year. A journey to Jericho, Friday night, Saturday night, you know, because of Sunday service, Saturday will be seven to nine. A journey to Jericho, three days. And I will explain everything to you, church. It is very important. Be here on Friday, be here on Saturday, and be here on Sunday. And sun, you know, after the service, Sunday morning, you go home, prepare yourself. If you don't want to go home, church, you can stay. This is your house. You must bring something, you know, food, something. Eat, wait for the washing of feet, the service. And your life will never be the same. If you are with me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout glory be to God. That, does it make sense to somebody? Does it make sense to someone? Shout hallelujah. Turn your Bible with me right now to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Where is your husband? Everybody shout hallelujah. I saw your husband and with your three children. While you were singing. Everybody shout hallelujah. 
Sharaba kutasi prosiata ya brasianta. The word called accident will never knock your door, okay? They will try you, but at the end of the day, they will fail. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout glory be to God. Where is Pastor Samson? Be on your feet. Do you want angels to do surgery for you? Angels to do some kind of surgery. Expect it, if God permit, tomorrow night. Expect it what? Tomorrow night. The angels will do surgery on you. Because I can see it happening. According to the word of God, so shall he be. Everybody shout hallelujah. The things that have manifested in your life, in your dream, is going to manifest physical. According to the word of God, so shall he be. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Can you turn your Bible to the book of Joshua? Joshua chapter 6. Are you here? If you are with me, shout hallelujah. Joshua chapter 6 and verse number 10. Joshua 6 and verse number 10. Sarabako sikita ya brosikita. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Do you have your Bible? But Joshua had commanded the army. Can you see it? But Joshua had commanded the people. My Bible says that the word, the army. But Joshua had commanded the word, the army. Do not give a war cry. Can you see it? I don't know about this one. Or do not, number one. Everybody say this after me. Number one, let's go. Do not give a war cry. Can you see it? That is number one. Everybody say number one. And number two, Joshua said, do not raise your voices. Everybody say number two, do not raise your voices. And number three, do not say a word until I tell you to shout. Oh, I didn't hear amen. I didn't hear amen. Number one, do not give a war cry. Number two, do not what? Raise your voices. Number three, do not what? Do not say a word until I tell you to shout. Shout glory be to God. It means that in life, there is time for everything. A time to keep quiet and a time to talk. A time to jump and a time to sit. A time to cry and a time to laugh. And Joshua commanded them and gave them three things. Do not give war cry. Do not say a word. Do not raise your voices until I tell you to shout. It means that the situation that you find yourself in, there is going to be a day, a day, and that day is now that your Joshua, who is Van Jomo, will tell you to shout. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout amen. amen. And will tell you to what? To shout. Church, I declare unto you today, as a prophet of God, that whether the enemy like it or not, you will shout before the end of this year. I said you are going to shout before the end of this year. If I'm talking to somebody, shout hallelujah. If I'm speaking to somebody, shout amen. I say, I prophesy to you that you are going to shout before the end of this year. I don't care how many days left. I don't care how many hours left. At your last minute, you will shout. Is it here lifted up? Everybody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, do not give a war cry. Look at somebody and say, do not cry. Do not raise your voice. Do not say a word. Everybody shout hallelujah. Church, it means that you can reach to some certain level. People begin to talk about you, which you don't have to say a word. 
You can read to some certain level with God has given you some kind of math. You know how to talk, which you can defend yourself, but the Lord doesn't want you to talk. Jesus, our master, read to that same level. And the word of the Lord said that Pontus Pilate, am I right? As Jesus, are you not the son of the living God? They are accusing you, they are lying, they are saying so many things. Are you the Messiah? And the man was still standing. Why don't you say a word? I want to stand on something and release you because you are an innocent man. But Jesus didn't say a word. Do not say a word. Do not say anything until I tell you to shout. It means that there is going to be a powerful day. Which whether the enemy like it or not, you will shout. And that time is now. And it's today. And it's this hour. And it's this season. We will shout. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at somebody and say you are going to shout. Look at somebody and say you are going to shout. Look at somebody and say you are going to shout. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? When the Lord, the God that you serve, eh, if that God is doing something in your life, you don't have to say a word. If the Lord is doing something in your life, you don't have to raise your voice. If the Lord is doing something in your life, you don't have to say a word. Leave everything unto him. He knows what he is doing. Some of you at times, you want to help God. And there is no way you can help God. He is God. He will not say a thing before he will do. He will prepare everything and he will finish everything before he said that say yet the Lord. He is not a God that will promise a lawyer can and then he will begin to do some. No, the Lord will prepare the things the lawyer needs before he speaks. That is why he is God. Until I tell you to shout. Until I tell you to what? To shout. Shout amen. Am I talking to somebody? I've come to realize that in this life, church, whether you like it or not, at times, you know, there are some certain things will knock your door and no one will force you not to dance. No one will force you not to uh, sing. You know, the situation will cause some kind of, uh, uh, you know, mighty things around you. It will create some atmosphere of joy and you'll begin to sing and begin to dance. Church, have you gone through this thing before? See yourself dancing in your washroom. And at times you look at yourself and just laugh. Is it like, hey, I'm getting something. Up. I'm a queen or something. Shout hallelujah. You yourself. Do you know the reason why? The reason is that I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I can sense mighty things in your life. That is why you started dancing. I can see breakthroughs in your life. That is why you started praising God. At times in your own car. In your own car, you begin to sing, you begin to clap, you begin to shake your head, you begin to shout. It means that there is something wonderful on its way coming to you. Do not say a word until I tell you to shout. Joshua told them. Joshua told them. Don't cry, church. Don't raise your voice, please. We do respect. And don't say a word until the Lord tells you to shout. Then you will shout. Why Joshua said that, church? Joshua gave them that kind of direction and said that God is doing something for himself. I don't want you guys to say anything. Some of you at times God will tell you to sit here. By the time God returns, you will not see you. You rush too much. 
will be calling you. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? you know, uh, am I not the one who told you to sit here? Oh God, <laughs> you know, you have really delayed. I wanted to know if indeed. When God tells you to sit, sit. When he tells you to rise, you have to rise. Some of you will wait for three years. Will not see anything. He said, God, where are you? You told me to sit. I can't see you. I can't find you, Lord. Where are you? God is up to something. Allow him to do his job. And the Israelites church obeyed Joshua. They didn't cry. They did not raise their voices. They didn't say a word. Until the day Joshua did what? Told them to what? To shout. And it came to pass. Shout in which ways? You have to shout. Because God has already handed these people, the land of Jericho, into our hands. Now you can shout. In our own mindset, church, I have come to realize that you have to see victory before you sing. Does it make sense to someone? You have to see some kind of things before you give a testimony. Am I right? But in God's own mind, God doesn't want you to see something before you give him praise. He wants you to give him praise in the midst of your trouble. He wants you to thank him. Where is you have nothing around you? He told the children of Israel to shout and they started shout. Shout. And what happened, church? The walls of what? Jericho started what? Started what? Started what? When they started what? Shouting. Today I declare unto you today, church, as a servant of God, your walls of Jericho, because of your voice, all of them will fall. I say it will fall. I say it will fall. Poverty will fall. Disgrace will fall. Calamity will fall. Receive it. I say receive it. Frustration will fall, your enemies will fall, poverty will fall, sickness will fall, receive it. Shout hallelujah. If you know your God, you will not sit and to see victory before you sink. If you know your God in the midst of your trouble, you will also praise him. That is why Daniel said in the book of Daniel 11 32, he said, And those who know their God, they shall be strong and do a sport. Lord, what do you have to praise your name? I haven't seen anything in my life, any good thing in my life. Look at just. The things God has already released unto your life. Even the life itself. You have to thank him. You have to thank him. The gift of life. Some people have billions. But they can't buy life. But God has given it to you for free. No oxygen bill. You pay light bill. You pay water bill. Am I right? Even the gas in your house, the heater and the uh, AC, am I right? You pay. What about the oxygen? If not, you and I could have had meter here. That somebody will come every month and check the meter. How many oxygen you uh, use a whole month? But it's free. No meter here, no meter here, no meter at the back. It's free. It's for everybody. Thank God that God didn't give oxygen to my kind. If not, you and I could have paid the bill. Even your light bill as I'm talking to you can't pay. 
gas bill, water, plus uh, oxygen. If not, some of you will tell the, uh, the, those who check the oxygen meter and said, I want you to turn it off. Next week when I come and pay, you will turn it uh, 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 on for me again. Everybody shout hallelujah. And I believe that some of you, because of the word called economics, am I right? You will slow some things down. Instead of you to receive 99, some kind of point and centimeter, you will turn it to 14. And to breathe it small, small. As you always do in your house. With this kind of weather. Just small heater from Walmart. In your house, like a, 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 a airport, a, a, you know, Lufthansa. Your visitor was, what is that? Oh, just small portable something. Why? Mama, why? Papa, why? And the rare one. It's up there because when you turn it, you can't pay. And the small one, it always check here, your feet. <laughs> your, your feet will be hot and up will be cold. Why? You are inviting stroke. <laughs> when you go home today, take the warm mat heater and say that, hey, I believe that my God can do something. Turn this one on. Enjoy it. A wonderful lady like you. When somebody wants to enter your, your room, the person has to knock, knock in, knock in, knock in. The light is off. If you want to read, you put small touch. Ah. When you are going out, yes, you have to turn everything off because you don't need it. Am I right? But when you are at home, are they, why? Are you the one who killed Jesus? When your children will be in the house, when they turn the thing off, hey, hey, hey. Your children, they are afraid. Even, how can they do their homework? I them. Look at them and say, why? 2018, may the living God change your life. I said, 2018, the living God will change your life. Say, I receive it. Am I preaching to somebody? There are some certain things at times, excuse me, we do respect plus me, that we do, that doesn't make sense. I beg you, that doesn't mean that you are somebody who knows how to economize things and the whole thing change. It doesn't make sense. God has given you light and for you to enjoy. The word of the Lord said, and the Lord God said, let there be light, and there was light. God didn't call darkness, but he called light. And the light appeared in what? Darkness. Not darkness appeared in a... a, a. Are they? Look at someone and say, why? <laughs> Everybody shout hallelujah. Am I, am I talking to somebody? I, am I speaking to somebody? If I'm talking to somebody, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. Oh, you can do better than this. You can do better than this. Look at somebody and say, when you work hard, you have to eat good. How can you eat good? I am not talking about, excuse me, more meat, more fufu, I am eating good, no. You can minimize it and balance everything, but at the same time you can, am I right? Enjoy it. Some people believe that to fill this uh, stomach and the whole thing, it means that, oh, thank you, Lord. American is good. You are dying. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. To, to, <laughs> 12 midnight, meat upon meat. Am I right? No less than 15 meat. Plus Diet Coke, seven. 
when somebody asks you, you say, I'm on diet because I'm drinking diet coke. <laughs> and 15 minutes plus 7 diet, diet coke. Uh -huh. 10 minutes time, you go to bed. Yeah, thank you, Lord. American is good. Africa, take yourself. I am not coming today. You are dying. Because to get the meat is good. Now you have to enjoy your meat. To eat meat, it takes eight days. How many days? Eight days to digest. White meat, chicken and fish and those things, three days. So one meat today, that doesn't mean that you, have, you don't have to enjoy meat or you can enjoy. It's up to you. But please, you have to minimize it. Because when you eat meat today, 15, today, boom, it has to take eight days. When you eat another one tomorrow, eight days, eight plus eight, 16. Three days, 24 days. <laughs> so four meats, one month, it has to. And look at yourself, you eat meat every day. And that meat, you don't like well done. Medium. Shout hallelujah. Me what? Medium. When you cut it, come and see blood. Oh, fresh. You are dying. <laughs> Stephen, let doctor cook good one. Well done. Okay? Everybody shout hallelujah. I, I, am I talking to somebody? Am I speaking to somebody? Look at somebody and say, it, it is very important that you will get well done. When you go to a restaurant, church, and if you need well done, you have to give yourself a long time. Am I right? But fast food, fast one. You need it fast. May God forbid Fabi from you. You will die fast. Everybody shout hallelujah. When you work hard, you have to eat good. Good food. Wonderful one. Does it make sense to somebody? So today, the Lord is telling you today that do not give war cry, number one, and do not what? Raise your voices, number two, and do not what? Do not what? Do not what? Until I tell you to shout. And the children of Israel, I said, started shouting. And do you know what happened? The walls of Jericho did fell. And they went to Jericho, destroyed everything, and they saved a certain woman called Rahab. And her house hold. Brothers, sisters, and everyone. Listen to me. This is the prophetic insight. 2018. Look at someone and say, 2018. Your walls. Your walls of Jericho. Will fall. Without your strength. I didn't hear amen. Look at somebody and say, my walls of Jericho is about to fall without my strength. It means that your God is going to do some kind of supernatural work for you in 2018, which no man can take a credit. At the end of the day, you will say that this one, it was the doing of the law. If I'm talking to somebody, shout hallelujah. Shout glory be to God. We all know that for somebody to break the wall, you have to use a dynamite. Am I right? You have to use some kind of uh, bazookas and some kind of, you can name them, am I right? Before you can break some certain walls. 
And this war that I'm talking about is not ordinary war. The fence that we always put it around our homes. That one is a tiny one. The walls of Jericho church, according to the Bible scholars church, seven horses. How many? Seven can pass, can move at the same time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because the security is the ox men used to what? Stay there and to monitor the moves. It was not just mere tiny war. It was a powerful war. And seven horses that can move or walk at the same time. So you can be sure. The kind of iron rods, am I right? And the kind of a concrete, you can be sure. It was very thick and very powerful. And how can you use your voice? Say that, prophet, I'm going to use my voice and to break the walls of death. Somebody will tell you that, excuse me, you are stupid. You don't know what you are doing. To break what? With your voice. And Joshua told them, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices and do not say a word. It means that your God is doing something until the day I tell you guys to, to shout. It means that the day that you will shout, it means that your God has already done everything, accomplished everything. Now you just have to praise him and for him to do his work. Church, and they did. And lo and behold, we all know what happened. The walls of Jericho fell because of the uh, voices. Any kind of war stretch around you. Today because of your voice. Those walls will fall. Oh I didn't hear amen. I didn't hear amen. I didn't hear amen. Look at some and say your walls is going to fall today. Everybody shout hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Attorney come. With due respect. Joe come. Tony, with due respect, stand here for me. Joe? Yes. Joe, stand here. Stephen, come. Dick and Howard, with due respect, come, please. This side. Uh -huh. I want you to face me, Joe. This is me. Am I right? Yes. Okay. That the Lord, God Almighty, wants me to read to this level. Level B, C, D. With due respect, church, forgive me. Let's take it that like you guys are my walls. You are my what? Walls. Anytime I want to reach to this level, I will hit my wall, wall and go back. Anytime I want to turn to left, I will hit my wall. Back, I will hit my wall. Right, I will hit my wall. Does it make sense? It means that until I break this kind of wall, there is no way I can reach to my destination. And how can I break my wall? It means that I have to fight them. Whether they have to break me or to break them. I'm talking about the one who is inside the wall. And we have some people that they are outside the world. That God has released money upon money. Mighty things here. Which God wants them to get in and take what they belongs to them. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And look at this. Another one. Anytime I will try to enter and take my possession, what will happen? I will hit this giant. And said that there is no way I will allow you to enter inside and take what belongs to you. So I will hit this one and this one will push me. I will try to go on this route and this one will hit me and I can't. And this one will hit me. So we have them in two ways. We have those who are inside that they want to get out. And we have those who are outside that they want to get in. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody Am I talking to somebody? So, I want you to put this picture. 
Which area do you belong? Are you the one who is inside that wants to reach to some certain level? Or are you the one who is outside that you want to get in and take what belongs to you? Tell me why. Do you get it? And excuse me, may God forbid, may God forbid that good people, may God forbid. And these demons, you know, the demons, they have already ordered them not to allow Frank Jumo to enter and take what belongs to me. So if I want to move to right, this demon will fight me. If I want to move to left, this demon will fight me. If I want to move one, this one will fight me. So the question right now is, those who are inside and those who are outside, which one in? Which area do you belong? Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody shout amen. amen. Can I tell you something? Those who are inside, God wants them to get somewhere. And those who are outside, the Lord wants them also to get something and start their life. But those who are inside, they have reached to some certain level which God wants them to continue. But those who are outside, they are now about to get something and to start their life. Today, we are not going to fight them. Today, we are going to shout. Amen. I said, we are not going to fight them, but we are going to what? Shout. shout. So, this picture of the, this word that I'm preaching about, right now, about Jericho, they were not inside. They were outside. They wanted to come in and destroy some certain things and take what belong to them. They killed all of them and they spared this one, Rahab, am I right? But do you know what they did? They took their gold, they took their silver, they took everything and they put it in God's own treasury. It means that they entered and destroyed everything and took what belongs to them. There are so many things God has already prepared for you and I. Until we get in, there is no way we can get it. And the Lord wants us to get in. And how can we get in? And those who are inside wants to step out and to get to their destination. But the demons are saying, now the level you are, that's it. There is no way you can move forward again. You've already reached to level nine. There is no way you can get to ten. Stagnancy. Stand still. When you reach to that level, whereby you can't move forward, do you know what will happen at the end of the day? You will begin to compromise. See that where I am right now, I thank God. By the way, the Lord has done something. I give praise to God. The word of the Lord says that he makes all things beautiful in his time. Excuse me. I know that at the right time, you will start compromising. Whereby the Lord wants you to move forward. Today, do not compromise. Do not negotiate with your enemies. Do not sit on the table with them. And tell them that I want to pay you. I want to give this to you. Can I, can I tell you guys the secret? In Nigeria, uh, the former president, Jonathan. Mr. Goodlock Jonathan, was a good man, if you don't know. Some people see that man as a corrupt something. The man was a very generous man, was a good man. But do you know what brought the downfall of that man? The day that man wanted to negotiate with Bukum Haram. How 
can you sit and negotiate and say, name your price? To tell my enemy, tell me what you want. I am ready to give to you so that you stop harassing me. No, don't do that as a Christian. Do not give them money. Put your money somewhere and tell them to face you. You have to face them. You have to break their necks. You have to break their hands. You have to conquer them and take what they be belong to them and to begin to drive them and possess their lands. That is the perfect will of God. Which area do you belong? You want to get in or you are in and you want to rest somewhere? I want you to answer yourself. Clap your hands for Jesus. I have five minutes to be 12.35 and I'm done. Listen to me. Look at somebody and say, which area do you belong? Do you want to get in? Or you are in and you want to rest somewhere? I want you to, uh, you, you, you have to check it. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout amen. amen. Can I tell you something? We have some kind of demons, you know, in the realms of the spirit, whether you like it or not, we have something that is called a barrier. Am I right? And in those days, our, uh, you know, four forefathers, they used to use a, uh, Rivers, am I right? River, this river, you have a farm. This river is a boundary between me and uh, 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 Mr. Joseph Uberto, am I right? River, so, so, and so. And here, even in this great nation, at times you can reach somewhere and you see, welcome to Howard County, and you see this kind of river, am I right? Going to this side, you see this kind of river, welcome to so, so, and so County, rivers. God is wise. And in the realms of the spirit, God wants you and I to pass some kind of barriers and boundaries and to possess our possessions and to read to the higher Shiginda Labogundi Libosiano. Ya Borosikita. How about come here? Touch this hand. Touch my hand. Receive that fire. <laughs> come. Hold this for me. Give me your hand. Receive that fire. Sweet. Bring it. Overtaking spirit is for you. Victor, come here. Where is Victor? Touch your heart. <laughs> leave him, leave him. Just monitor him, please. Jennifer, come here. May the Lord touch your mouth with that fire. Receive it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Who wants to receive the touch from above? You need the touch from above. Everybody shout hallelujah. Come here. Touch my tongue, please. Joseph Tabe, come here. Touch here. <laughs> Clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> Say, 
Somebody ask me why. Somebody ask me why. Everybody shout hallelujah. Once I was preaching, my angel released some kind of fire here. And I asked the Lord, I said, Father, what is it? The Lord said that give it to some people, those that you want them to receive. And use this and talk to them. That we use our feet to walk, but we don't use our hands. And today, just say the Lord, everybody in this house, God has already anointed your feet. Oh, I didn't hear amen. May you be on your feet and make a joyful noise. I said, God has already anointed your feet. You are going to run like Elijah. You are going to run like Elijah. You are going to run like Elijah. You are going to be unstoppable. And thus say the Lord, from today till the end of this year, you will be unstoppable. Anybody that will try to stop you will surely die. Because your fire has been released. Everybody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say your fire has been released. If you believe that shout hallelujah. Everybody shout amen. May you make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh you can't do better than this. Shout glory be to God. Shout hallelujah. Look unto your neighbor and say this is your time. Your season and your hour. Everybody shout hallelujah. Church, may you be on your feet right now. Be on your feet right now. I want you to put 26. Joshua chapter what? Chapter 6 and verse number 26. And I'll be done for today. Are you outside or you in? Look at someone and say, are you in or outside? Those who are outside wants to get in. And those who are in want to reach to some certain level. Which area do you? And, and let me tell you this. Those who doesn't want you to move forward. Starting from today. Kalabaka. Everybody shout hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Somebody, you know, we have some preachers. You know, we have to talk about love. Jesus is love. You know, that is why for God so loved the world. That is gave his only begotten son. You know, everything is about love. That is the foundation of Christianity. Yes, I believe in those things. Love is good. Love is good. Am I right? But listen to me. The same Papa, the living God, spoke through his servant. That suffer a witch not to live. Love is good. But is that not the same prophet Samuel who beheaded or killed King Agak? Oh, God is love. Is that not prophet Elisha who killed about 42 children that started mocking him when he started his ministry? Oh, God is love. Continue to sit down and let the witches finish you. And one day, one day, the same witch will come to restoration and say that I have a testimony. God is good. God is a merciful God. I am the one who killed a mama. I am the one who killed prophet. I am the one I am banu. No witch can give a testimony that I killed Frank Juma. That doesn't mean that my God is not God. No witch can come here and say that I'm the one who killed Stella Martinson. I killed my father. I killed Stella Martinson. I killed, uh, may God forbid, Victor. I killed Jennifer. I killed Amy. I killed this one. But thank God, now I am born again. I am born again. I am born again. And that witch that killed no less than 19 people will go to heaven. What about those that she killed? That is why in the book of Chronicle, in your own book, it will never enter your own book that a witch in your family killed you. That doesn't mean that our God is not God. But because our God is God, no witch, no sickness, 
can open its mouth and say that I am the one who killed. Am I talking to somebody? And these days, we can hear and see so many testimonies. And some of you, church, I don't want anybody to come and tell me that I, I passed away, I died, and I went to hell. I saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. And the, the Lord told me, it's full of a street, gold, and the whole thing. The Bible has already said it. And some of you, you are interested about those things than the Bible itself. This one passed away, saw Angel Gabriel, Angel one, hey, one day, one day we will see them. I'm not saying that the testimonies in the whole thing, church, they are not good or something. It's good, but you have to rely upon the things of God. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I, I, I'm not talking to somebody. And the person will come, I killed this one. He said, hey, oh, I killed this one. Eh? And they will mention your name. I'm the one who killed uh, Dekini Beto. And how can I wish kill Dekini Beto? Eh? And they will take the credit. And the pastor will come and say, are you ready to confess? Man of God, I've already confessed. The word of the Lord said that when you come unto me, I will wash you. Am I right? And you will become clean. Now I know that I am a born again with all the things that I did. The Lord has, yes, God will forgive that person. And the person will go to heaven. And what about you? Let's take it that maybe you didn't know God. The person killed you and now you are in hell. And the person will go to heaven and will come and mention your name. No demon, no witch in my family, outside, in the church, somewhere, can stand and say that I killed Frank Jumor. That day, tender will come down. That day, tender will come down. So it means, listen to me, so it means that any witch, any Obanje, any Mami Wata, any Papa Wata, any, uh, mention their names, demons in your family, demons in the church, Demons in our uh, outside that they want to finish you, they will die before me. Look at somebody said they will die before you. I have a good news from this altar to you. Those who have received spiritual contracts that they have already promised them under the water. That they should give them for some time. They will sit with that. They will finish you. Just get ready. Do you have the funeral cloth? Do you have some of them? Go and buy one. Because very soon you will go to their funeral. I said go and buy one. Very soon you will go to their what? Their funeral. Go and buy one. Shout hallelujah. Shout Amen. I came from Africa with one of them. The one that I wrote to my friend's funeral. I have it in my bag. So those who are ready to swallow me alive, I am going to use that dress and to visit their funeral. Ah. It's in my bag right now. Everybody shout hallelujah. It means that no demon can touch you. Because if the Lord is on your side, who can be against you? They want your children to be fatherless and motherless. And if you are not alive, now that you are alive, look at your children. I tell me, I pray that Lord give me long life to see my children coming up. Because I have seen it before. I know how it is. And somebody will finish you. Your children will go to school. Bring your father's father's day. All the fathers will come. Your baby will be sitting somewhere. And the one who killed that papa is the wife. To kill your own husband. Because of the spiritual husbands. Well, Bodam, you are crazy. If there is any man here, and if your wife is boja boja, 
Today, the oil that is upon my life, I set you free. If your husband is boja boja, you that woman are set you free. It is the will of God that I'm telling you and your wife will be older and see some guys in your house and to seek the hand in what? For some of you, am I right? You'll be holding your, uh, uh, how are you? With your gray hair here <laughs> and bless them. And see your grand grandchildren, grandpa will be sitting here, will be kissing you. While all your teeth will go. Am I right? It will go, and you put some meat here and rub it down until you die. Everybody shout hallelujah. My grandmother reached at the age of 109. 109. We see my wife, Pastor Vivian. Hey, my say, my in law. Didn't use any. Uh, uh, uh. We we'll see you from afar. We we'll mention Vivian, my in-law, afar. Also, for it means a pastor. When did you, when you visit, uh, hey, we we'll ask you about chicken, but didn't have any teeth. You know, African for you, all the teeth, chicken and bread, Sprite, Coke, soda. You know. Mommy, what do you need the chicken for? He said, buy it. I need the full one. Yeah. Miss Vivian will buy, I will buy, we'll put it, we'll put it on. But the, we'll be talking about the time you realize whether angels took it or somewhere, that will be here. We'll pour the Sprite in the cup and put the salt bread and soak it. Come and see. God bless you. God bless you. That is the level God wants you and I. You will not die young. I will not die young. Those who are watching, you will not die young. We will see 2018. We will see 19. We will see 20, 21, 30. Everybody shout hallelujah. I'm not talking to somebody. Look unto your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is your time. Do you know the reason why? Because somebody prayed in that family that do not allow anybody to die in his or her sin. And that person was Frank Jomo. He said, Lord, when they're about to die, they have to know Christ. And because of my word, God sustained my, my grandmother until I presented Christ. I preached Christ to her, accepted Christ, everything, and somebody used to go to the house and do some kind of service. And the time she was about to die, we would tell people, I can see Jesus. How did Jesus look like? They brought some kind of calendar and they say, he said, this man, I saw this man. That was the time I found out that very soon the woman would go. Died in the Lord, enjoy some good food, good uh, room, good bed, and now she's in heaven. No teeth, but enjoy chicken. You have to say a word. You have to speak. None of your children will be a victim. You shall never be a victim. We will always hear good news in this house. If the witches in this house has planned calamity against this church, may the Lord return it back to sender. 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 Return it. What they are thinking about you will not work. Their evil agenda will never happen to the church. Hey, where's what? 26. Put it there. 26. Says 26. 
and I'll be done for today. Are they here? Or they are not? Uh, says 26. Joshua 6. And verse what? Can we see 26? Look, look at this. Everybody 1, 4, 10. At that time, Joshua pronounced uh -huh, curse before Look at this, look at this. To rebuild the city of what? Curse be unto a man who will try to rebuild the city of Jericho again. That is what Joshua said. At the cost of his first son, will he lay it foundation? And at the cost of his youngest, will he set up his gate? And some of you are here, you know, we have to love, we have to love. Uh, uh, you know, we have to forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Ha, ha. Don't, don't change the word of God. The time Jesus prayed and said, oh, Father, may you forgive them. They don't know what, they didn't accept Jesus. They didn't know that he was the son of the living God. That is why he prayed on the cross of the Calvary and said, I forgive them because they don't know. And you are here praying for the witches. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Hey, listen to me. A witch is a witch. Yeah. One time in Ghana, a certain lady who is a red witch came to me. Prophet, am I a witch? I said, ah, but if you're a witch, you know. If you are not, you know. Why do you have to come and ask me? Are you one of them? He said, me, I don't know. I said, okay, go and answer yourself. Because midnight, you go to meeting. You turn into cobra. You turn into cat. You turn into something. Under the water, you do meeting. Are you trying to tell me that midnight, when you turn to cat and dog and those things, you don't know? And you are here praying this prayer. Father, forgive them. Last night, they did some kind of meeting agenda about you. The way they can destroy you. And you are here praying for them. Forgive them. They don't know what. Continue. Sister Love, continue. Brother Love. I will never pray that kind of prayer. Amen. I will destroy their ways. I will crush them. Amen. So that what they are thinking about me will not come to pass. Amen. When you hear something that they are saying something about you, church, do not sit and say that it will never happen to me. Touch not that not to the church. No. You have to resist it. You have to cancel it. You have to turn it back to sender. Because it's the evil agenda. Anybody that will try you again. The year that we are about to enter. The firstborn of that person. Will use it as the what? Foundation. And the last one will be the gate. That say yet the Lord of hosts. May you make a joyful noise unto them. Take your seat. Look at someone and say, the man of God has already done everything. I didn't hear amen. amen. I say, any witch, any wizard that will try the church again, that will try me again, that will try you again, the first one of that person shall be the foundation. And the last one, if the person doesn't have children, he or she herself will go. Enough is enough. Look at someone and say, enough is enough.